Hello and welcome to another video. So today we're taking a look at the Pyrus Mantanoid 3-pack. We are starting to run out of 3-packs from Wave 1. We have only got two more after this, which should be a lot of fun, as there are a couple in there that I'm really interested in. Although I do like the idea of Pyrus Mantanoid. We have a Darkest Mantanoid one from the 3-pack of that, but the Pyrus one really does tickle my interest. So we do also have a Nilius and a Fangzor in this, which are actually some of the ones I was really after. If I had to pick any set, that I was after back gun in. This is definitely one of the ones I would prioritize since it's got such good back gun in it. And I'm having a little trouble getting this guy out now because I didn't lift the side up properly, but that's okay. So we've got the, of course, cores here. I've got the cards beside me somewhere here that I just had them. Let's see. Yep, there they are. And of course the back gun just off to the side, out of view for you guys. We'll bring those in towards the middle of the video once we've of course taken a look at all the cards and the cores. Since typically the back gun are very obvious, you can see what they are in most cases and it's usually not a big problem. Again, I'm having more trouble with these than I would like. Sometimes they will just open, other times they will just kind of tear and that's a little disappointing. So the couple of, of course, starter stuff that you don't really need once you've looked at them a few times. So the first card, of course, that you can see here when it, of course, comes into focus is Fangzor. It is a double shield, which is actually pretty decent, double shielding. I've been thinking of going with a full-on double shield deck, and I've got a pretty decent setup for that so far. It is a B-Power 700, and it has a plus 5 attack, so it's actually very respectable. With the Evo, I think this thing could be an absolute tank of a Fangzor. It's definitely one of the best ones. Uh, we also get Meteoric Lance, which is not a very impressive Pyrus card. Uh, Nilius. Ventus is a shield and fist with a plus 400B and a 4 attack. Pretty okay. I think I've also got the Evo for that in my set somewhere. If you've watched my previous videos, I'm sure you guys would have seen that. If not, just take a quick look at it. It's not hard to find online. Mentonite Ultra, so the main guy for this one is a double fist. Actually, I think I'm running a fist deck over a shield deck, so this actually would have some synergy with the deck I am running. It is a plus 600B and a plus 2 attack. Pretty okay, so... 600 plus, you know, 602, that's okay. I don't mind that actually at all. That's pretty pretty reasonable for a Pyrus back gun. So then we of course have Laser Claw, which is just a 6 plus 10, not even as good as Meteoric Lance personally. Okay, if you're just running a straight up Ventus, but if you're incorporating Pyrus at all, it's not even worth it. Uh, Song of Fire, which is a 3 energy card to gain 5 energy. So this is just extra energy. It's actually quite interesting. There are some interesting combinations coming up where you could really abuse this card and I'm really glad to have at least one of it because that will come in super handy. Then of course we have the cause for this this set which is going to be the negative one fist, a plus 400b for Equus and Ventus shield, a plus 100b and a Pyrus and Darkest plus 3 fist for breed fist, a plus 150b and plus 2 fist which actually isn't too bad for a green fist, uh, plus 50 and 1, and a plus 250B shield, so pretty straightforward ones, nothing too insane in the claws there. Definitely not as good as some of the other sets as far as claws go, but as far as Bakugan go, they're actually pretty respectable and not too bad at all if you are looking to, of course, get the whole set. Now, I did manage to, of course, pop these open as I was getting them out, as they're both very easy to open Bakugan, except for the tail on Ilias, which is its main sticking point. There we go. So, Rellus Fangzor and Ventus Nilius. Definitely, definitely nice. I've got to double check this Mantanoid here to get him out since I don't want to have to worry about breaking his bits off because he is one of the more delicate ones as far as thin bits of plastic go. Although he is definitely one of the cooler looking, looking back guy out there. Um, so his tail design is a little weird, I think. I always thought it was a little weird. But definitely not too bad looking. So the Ventus Nilius actually is going to round out our Nilius set pretty nice. We so far have uh, three, I think, out of all the um, different colored Niliuses, so this will be number four. Not too many left to go before we have a full set of them, and that's really something I'm after, and one of the reasons I wanted this set in particular. Also, I've been trying to collect as many as I can to have enough variety to do different things with. Then we, of course, have the Aurelis Fangzor, which is... Another not bad looking Fangzor overall, although I think the black underneath there is a little iffy and the black on the mouth I'm not a big fan of. They could have went for the silver tone and black in other places I think. It might have been a little nicer, but overall not too bad. 
And now the star of the show, the Pyrus Antinoi. The green on this thing is absolutely gorgeous as it is on most Ultra Pyruses and there's some nice accents around it, so really cool, especially since they put it on the eye. Now this thing I haven't folded up for quite some time, so sorry if I really do screw this up going into it, but I'm trying to remember exactly how it went and it's not really a fun thing. I believe you've got to do the sickly bits first, so it's, it's Praying Mantis Claw Bits which then have to kind of uh, fold into its body in a reasonable way, which is not the fun part of this video for sure. So when that comes in, that comes in, all that's left is these to clip into there. So actually not too hard to do if you are just loosely doing this. It's just a little annoying because it can be a bit finicky and that's not something that's always a good thing. As you can see, I'm covering up most of the back on my hand to really kind of uh, round it out. But there we go, I think we've got it all Closed, it is definitely loose as far as I feel. I feel like it's got some give to it. But still, while it is one of the more intricate designs to fold up, it's one of the cooler ones overall. And usually it's pretty awesome when he opens since it does open up all right. I can never get this thing to roll straight though, which is always a painful experience when you're trying to roll them straight on. Uh, we'll, we'll give it a go, not really working for us, we'll just kind of give it a nice drop on. Come on, where's the magnet? There it is. Getting back open. Of course his abdomen is the magnet catch and that's not necessarily a bad thing since he is a very nice design. So if you guys did enjoy this video and you want to see more, be sure to check out the others on the channel. We have a couple more of these Wave 1 3 packs to go before you've opened every single one, which should be pretty awesome. Once we are done with those, I believe we've got at least a couple of 5 packs to do at some point and a couple more 3 packs from Wave 3 to round out the full set. Then we'll probably do a full collection showcase going over everything that I currently have and that will be pretty exciting since we're going to have at least 4 cases worth of the Bakugan storage cases. So I don't have that many cases, but we're going to have that many back gun. Should be a lot of fun. If you guys did enjoy this video, hit the like button and subscribe. You'll find anything in the description below that you may need. Till next time, guys. See ya.